From the Burj Khalifa climb and ghost protocol that supercharged Cruz's career to the absolutely insane biplane stunt in Dead Reckoning Part 2, these are the most expensive stunts from the Mission Impossible franchise. Now, I don't know about you, but watching Tom Cruise scale the Burj Khalifa was a jaw-dropping experience. No one was ready for the actor and his production company to dial up the stakes this dramatically. Ghost Protocol changed things for the Mission Impossible franchise, injecting new life into the action star's career and setting him up as the franchise's lead producer. This allowed him to mold the script and the franchise as he saw fit. It's common knowledge that he's one of the only actors in Hollywood right now who believes in the old-school cinema experience. If the audience is buying a ticket for your movie, you need to make sure they have a good time once they sit down. So, Ghost Protocol went big and bold on the stunts, pulling out every trick in the book to make sure your jaw was on the floor during the action sequences. And no stunt was more impressive than the one set on the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Now, the Burj is an 828-meter-tall skyscraper covered with tons of glass and metal, so filming a stunt like that was going to be complicated, expensive, and lengthy. The director, Brad Bird, originally thought that they'd have to do it the traditional way, on a soundstage somewhere in Hollywood where they'd recreate a section of the building and have Tom perform the stunt in relative safety. But Tom being Tom said that he was going to go to Dubai and find a way to do the stunt for real. Now, I know it looks like he was free solo climbing the Burj using nothing but special gloves, but he was secured with multiple high-tension cables at all times. It took Tom and his crew five months to plan, execute, and shoot the entire scene, and they broke about 35 of the Burj's windows in the process. This wasn't by accident, though. The crew needed to break the windows in order to gain access to areas they otherwise couldn't get to. And from what I can tell, this cost the production company a lot of dollar bills. The Burj has a mind-blowing 24,348 windows, or 120,000 square meters of glass. To put that number into perspective, imagine that much glass spread across nearly 23 football fields. It costs a lot of money to clean and replace them. So 35 of the Burj's windows would have cut a hole in the production company's bank account. But that's not the half of it. Ghost Protocol was filmed with huge, bulky IMAX cameras that had to be mounted on a helicopter. And they're extremely loud when running at full speed. The director said that a lot of the scene's cost came due to the IMAX cameras being really hard to manage, especially when they had to be managed on a helicopter, near the tallest building in the world. IMAX film reels don't last long, and the cameras are huge, so they had to land the helicopter just to change the magazine. Then they had to come back up again to resume shooting, but then they'd run out of fuel in a couple of minutes. So, yeah, that racked up the bill and ballooned the budget to $145 million. But hey, the movie got that back in spades, so no harm was done. Now, Tom could have taken it easy after Ghost Protocol, but he decided to go bigger and bolder than ever before. And that's when he decided to pull off the insane Airbus A400M stunt in Rogue Nation. There's Christopher Nolan, who bought a decommissioned 747 and crashed it into a building for Tenet. And then there's Christopher McQuarrie, who was more than happy to strap his lead actor to an A400M military transport aircraft and hit the gas. Rogue Nation's marketing hinged on the fact that the actor would actually be clinging to the side of the plane for dear life. In an interview with Variety, Cruz revealed that he was very scared during the filming, but he fought through it because he knew he needed to create good cinema for his audience. What's impressive, though, is that the plane took off eight times during filming. And this means that Tom had to be strapped in, perform the scene during the takeoff, land, and then repeat the whole thing eight times. Damn, I know I couldn't do that. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, the film cinematographer Robert Ellswit said that the crew had to clean the runway every single time they did the stunt. They filmed the sequence at the RAF Wittering Air Base in the UK, and Cruz had to wear special lenses in order to protect his eyes from debris. The team did it with a dummy first, just to make sure a human wouldn't just fly off due to the high wind pressure. And then they attached the camera rig and did a few more rehearsals. So, factoring in the number of rehearsals, the plane's fuel costs, and the rights to film at the RAF Wittering Air Base, the film's $150 million budget had to make a ton of room for this stunt. Not to mention the fact that it was Tom who insisted on performing as many times as possible to ensure he got the perfect take. 
It just goes to show you how dedicated he is to his craft and how far he'll go to make sure his movie is as good as it can be. It's one of the reasons why Top Gun Maverick made over $1.4 billion at the box office. And it's why he went even bigger for Fallout in 2018. When audiences watched Rogue Nation, they thought that there's no way Tom's gonna top the stunts in that movie. But then came the Halo jump. High altitude, low opening. This means that Tom flew up to about 30,000 feet, jumped off the plane, and then did a free fall until he was about 1,000 feet off the ground. That's when he deployed his parachute, and it's one of the most insane things you could see on an IMAX screen. Audiences who saw it said that the actor's hard work was worth it, because nothing could have prepared them to watch a stunt like that. And how do you perform a highly complex halo jump with multiple moving parts? Well, you rehearse it for months with experts who teach you how to maneuver yourself mid-air in order to avoid collisions with the cameraman. Yeah, Tom had to actively avoid the cameraman who was free-falling with him at 200 miles an hour. And on top of that, the scene was a highly choreographed dance between Tom and Henry Cavill's stunt double. The crew had to perform over 100 jumps in order to get the right shot, and none of it happened overnight. First, they developed a helmet that would protect Tom and the crew from hypoxia, which is a condition where you suffer extremely low oxygen levels in the blood, leading to confusion and a slowed heart rate. It's basically losing your mind without actually knowing it. The next thing they did was build a massive wind machine at the world's largest wind tunnel, which happens to be at NASA's Ames Research Center in Moffett Federal Airfield, Mountain View, California. You'd think that would inflate the movie's already huge budget, but wait till you hear about the next phase of filming the Halo stunt. Tom Cruise and the United Arab Emirates have a great relationship with each other, and when the action star needed a place to rehearse and film the Halo jump, the UAE stepped in and offered their vast, sandy deserts to Tom and Chris McQuarrie. The actor said that if the UAE hadn't offered help, then the jump wouldn't have been made. So that's two mind-blowing Mission Impossible stunts filmed in the Arabian deserts, eh? Anyway, the next part was very tricky. The crew had a three-minute window to film the entire sequence, and it had to be done as close to sunset as possible. Otherwise, the footage would either be too dark or too bright. And knowing Tom, it had to be perfect. He and the crew performed five halo jumps every single day. And since it took them 100 jumps to get the shot that they needed, it took around 20 days of continuous shooting to complete the entire stunt. Seriously, can the Oscars finally include a category for stunt work? Because Tom and his crew clearly deserve it. But maybe they'll get the recognition they deserve when Dead Reckoning Part 1 and 2 hit theaters in 2023 and 2024. They were filmed back to back, and they weren't cheap. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the total budget ballooned to an astronomical $290 million. That's more than any other movie in the franchise. Tom and McQuarrie aren't leaving anything up to chance for Ethan Hunt's last ride and they made sure no expense was spared in filming its daredevil action set pieces. The largest and most expensive of them will come in Dead Reckoning 2. Tom's planned a stunt that involves three biplanes, which will fly right next to each other, and I'm guessing he'll be jumping between them with nothing but a rope attached to his belt. According to British tabloid The Sun, Cruz learned how to fly the planes, and then rehearsed the entire sequence in the UK in 2021. Here's hoping that Oscar category comes through soon, right? So, from the absolutely insane biplane stunt in Dead Reckoning Part 2, to the jaw-dropping Burj Khalifa climb in Ghost Protocol, those were the most expensive stunts from the Mission Impossible franchise.